Hi, I'm Ryan Payne with Garage Gurus, and I'm here to share a tech tip with you on refilling a cooling system using a vacuum venturi cooling system refiller. So this is a 2014 Dodge Journey, and it was brought into the shop uh, because it had a check engine light on, and the customer was complaining that it took a long time to get warm. Now we're here in Detroit, it's cold outside, I think it's about 14 today, and I understand their complaint there. There's no heat in this car. So we hooked up the scan tool, we got the 128 code, um, we went through our diagnostic process and found out it does have a bad thermostat. So I got it here on the table, I'll show it to you because we've already replaced it. And you can see where the tower on this thing has broken off, so the spring stay is not in there anymore. So the thermostat's just wide open, this thing cannot build any heat. So what I'm going to show you is a tool that actually helps you to get this thing filled up and we can be assured that there's no air in the system when we return it back to the customer. I've run across this personally many times. Uh, we sit here and get it bled and I know you fight some cars sometimes to get them truly bled out and get the system operating properly. But not only that, I've had uh, personal experience that we fill it up, we drive it on our test drive route, you know, three, six miles. We think everything is good. You give it back to the customer. They drive it home, they bring it back to you because the coolant light's on because of the level. So I came up with, or I found this tool actually that has alleviated those issues. So this is a vacuum venturi uh, cooling system refiller. This is a Maco, but there's several suppliers out there that make these things. And what this thing allows you to do is pull a vacuum on the cooling system. Now the first thing we can do is when we pull that vacuum, we can use this as a diagnostic tool as well because we can watch the vacuum and make sure that there's no leaks. So think about a full engine rebuild or maybe a set of head gaskets. Some of these newer engines, we're putting not only head gaskets, but water pump gaskets, thermostat gaskets, O-rings, things like that. So this is a nice tool before I dump, you know, two gallons of coolant in that thing to know that everything is sealed up properly uh, before I do that. So the second thing is, when we pull the vacuum on that cooling system, we're getting everything out of it, so when we refill it, actually using this tool, we are assured that all the air is out of it, and that car is gonna be good to go, we're not gonna have any problems there. So let's get this tool hooked up to our journey and see how that process works. All right, let's get this thing hooked up. But before we do, let's talk about how this thing's designed a little bit. So we have our air side from our shop air, uh, we don't have to regulate it. This thing works on normal shop air, you know, 150 PSI or so. We've got this line here that's actually our vent line. So what's being pulled out of the system is going to come out of this. So you need to direct this towards a bucket or something like that, um, just in case we do get a little cooling out of it. So I've got a bucket under the car. I'm going to run that too. This other line here is our fill line. And you'll see there's a screen on the end of it. Uh, make sure there's no uh, particulates in your coolant, but we're gonna run this into a jug um, of coolant. We'll pull it from there. Now our two valves, this will open up and allow our, coolant, our new coolant to be pulled in. We're gonna keep that closed for now. We'll get into that in a minute. But this one over here is actually the vacuum. So this actually allows the shop air in, which creates the venturi in here and it creates the vacuum. So let's get this thing hooked up. We're lucky with this one that we don't actually need an adapter because of the style of this cap. But like I said, you can use it with whatever style adapter you have. Let's get some shop air into this thing and get a vacuum in the system. All right, so we're gonna get our shop air connected here to our tool. And now we'll open our valve and allow our shop air to create our venturi and pull our vacuum. So we open that valve up all the way. It'll take, you know, a little bit of time, normally less than a minute um, to get our full vacuum pulled in here. But what we want to see is probably a minimum of around 24 inches. Um, once we get there though, our diagnostic side of this is to let this thing sit for a minimum of 30 seconds um, to 60 seconds on this tool. Now your tool may be a little different. Um, it may have different numbers there. So I'd refer to that to make sure we got it right. So this one looks pretty good. We're almost at 25 inches here. We'll let it sit for just a little bit longer. And it's creeping there. It's about at 25. We want to make sure that needle's not moving anymore. We want to make sure we're as deep in vacuum as we can get. It. 
And I think we're at 25 and I think that's where it's gonna sit. So we'll get this thing turned off. Now let's get our uh, coolant jugs out and get this thing refilled. All right, we got vacuum in our system. Uh, I've got my uh, fill hose in my coolant bottle. Uh, so let's, we're gonna open this valve here and let this uh, system start to fill. So you can watch it as I open it. You're gonna see that coolant just like that start filling the system. You can, I don't like to open it fully because especially when I'm using a gallon bottle, um, I wanna be sure that I don't get down to the bottom and run out of coolant and suck a bunch of air back into it. Um, so I'm just gonna let it go about two thirds and I'm just watching my coolant bottle the whole time. And the whole time here, all we're doing is just pulling coolant in there, um, not letting any air in it. That's kind of our main focus, especially when we have to swap bottles. So we're about halfway there. We've got about a half gallon in it. Getting down towards the bottom. Once again, we wanna stop. We wanna leave a little bit in the bottom of this bottle so we don't wanna suck air. So we're down right about the bottom of this, so I'm gonna shut it off. And I'm gonna get my other bottle out um, and we'll finish this thing up. All right, I got my second bottle hooked up. I was very careful to make sure we didn't get any air in this thing. So we'll open the valve up, the fill valve, and uh, get this thing completely full. So open it up again. Yeah, yeah, just that tiny little bit of air there, not a whole lot. I'm not gonna worry about that one small bubble that went through. Once again, about two thirds of the way is where I like to do it. You can do it wherever you feel comfortable with. I just like to be able to look at my bottle. We should get this thing full and we'll know we're full because we'll see the coolant stop running through and we'll obviously be, have no vacuum in that system because our coolant has actually replaced that. And the process unfortunately does slow down um, as you lose vacuum, it's not pulling it out of here as fast. Um, so when it does this, I will go ahead and open it up to full um, because it slowed down so much anyways. And I'm just watching that gauge and watching my coolant level. Watch my gauge, watch my coolant level back and forth. And it looks like I'm gonna be good here. So I'm all the way open. And that gauge is about to read zero. So I know I won't have any uh, more fluid pulling through. And that is it guys, we're at zero. I got no more coolant flowing out of here, so I know this system's full. Let's get this thing disconnected. Um, I'll put the cap back on it. We'll take it for a test drive uh, to make sure it's good and uh, we'll be good to go. All right guys, we're back in the shop. Just came back from our test drive. No check engine light on. Uh, we've got good heat in the car, so we know we're fixed. Uh, we do want to double check and just make sure that our coolant level is good uh, so we don't have any issues. So we know now we can get this thing ready to go. We'll get it back to the customer and this job's complete. So for more information, visit our website at garagegurus.tech. And for more videos like this, visit our YouTube channel and smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you.